Different hearts, different dreams. Injective souls ignite the beams. No dream alone, no path ignored. Surjective wills knock every door. More hearts to thrive, or more dreams to grow. Two mighty sets now march toward battle. The wings of cardinality raise us high to the heaven of infinity. Be Previously, we introduced several equivalent formulations of injectivity and showed how they relate to each other. In today's session, we turn to surjectivity. Our goal is to prove that the following four properties, namely the surjectivity, the image preservation, the existence of a right inverse, and the right cancellativity, are all equivalent to each other. Let us begin by recalling what each of these properties means. Suppose we have a function f from a set A to a set B. First, the standard definition for surjectivity requires that for every element y in B, there exists at least one element x in A, such that f of x equals y. That is, every element in the codomain is hit by some element in the domain under the function. Second, image preservation. Take any subset D of B. First, consider its preimage under F, which is a subset of A. Then take the image of that preimage, which yields a subset of B. Image preservation requires that this resulting subset of B agrees exactly with the original subset D. Third, the existence of a right inverse. This means there exists a function H from B to A, such that composing F with H gives the identity function on B. In other words, for every y in B, H sends y to an element in A in a way that, if we apply F to HY, we get back y. Last but not least, the right cancellativity. This property claims that for any set C and any two functions lambda1 and lambda2 from B to C, if lambda1 composed with F equals lambda2 composed with F, then lambda1 must equal lambda2. In other words, Having the function f in hand, a function lambda from b to c, is uniquely determined by its composition with f. We prove the equivalence of these properties in a circular fashion. Starting by assuming that the function is surjective, we aim to prove image preservation. To this end, let d be an arbitrary subset of the codomain b. Recall that we have already shown that the image of the preimage of d is always a subset of d so we only need to prove the reverse inclusion. Let y be an element of d. Since the function is surjective, there exists some x in a such that fx equals y. Because y belongs to d, x belongs to the preimage of d. Therefore, fx, which is precisely y, belongs to the image of the preimage of d. This proves the other set inclusion, and we are done. Next, we assume that the function preserves image and proceed to prove that it admits a right inverse. We construct a right inverse, denoted by h from b to a, explicitly as follows. For any element y in b, consider the singleton set containing just y. By the image preservation property, this set must be equal to the image of its own preimage. It follows that the preimage of the singleton y is non-empty. Therefore, we can choose some x in this preimage and define h y equals x. Repeating this process for every y in b, we define a function h from b to a. By construction, h is clearly a right inverse of f. Now, assume that the function f admits a right inverse. We prove the property of right cancellativity. To this end, let h be a right inverse of f. Consider an arbitrary set c and two arbitrary functions lambda1 and lambda2 from b to c, such that lambda1 composed with f equals lambda2 composed with f. In other words, these two compositions are the same function from a to c. Now, we compose both sides with h. The left-hand side becomes lambda1 composed with f composed with h. Since f composed with h is the identity function on b, it reduced to lambda1 composed with the identity on b, which is then just lambda1. Similarly, for the right-hand side, we have proved thus lambda1 and lambda2 are identical to each other, 
therefore the right cancellativity. Finally, given the right cancellativity of f, we prove that it is surjective. First, observe a trivial case. If the codomain b is a singleton, then every function from a to b is automatically surjective, and there is nothing to prove. Hence, we assume that b contains at least two distinct elements. To prove the desired implication, we proceed by contrapositive. Assume that f is not surjective, and show that right cancellativity fails. Specifically, we construct a set C and two functions, lambda1 and lambda2, from B to C, such that their compositions with f are equal, but lambda1 and lambda2 themselves are not. Since f is not surjective, there exists an element in B, call it y star, that is never hit by f. Let C be the set 0, 1. Define lambda1 as the constant function that maps every element of b to 0, lambda2 as the function that maps y star to 1, and all other elements of b to 0. Now, for any element x in a, fx is never equal to y star due to our assumption. Therefore, both lambda 1f and lambda 2f are constantly equal 0. In particular, these compositions are the same function. However, lambda 1 and lambda 2 differ at y star, so they are not the same function. Thus, right cancellativity fails when f is not surjective, and we are done. Having established the equivalence of conditions for surjectivity and injectivity, by combining them together, we will have a full characterization of bijectivity as well. With these concepts in hand, we will turn to the study of cardinality in the next section. Shinla Tensei